Our scripture this morning is in Mark 9. And Jesus has just come from telling his disciples for the first time that he is going to die. And they're on their way to Capernaum, and they get into a discussion behind Jesus. Um, he's walking ahead of them, probably ignoring them, but listening, kind of, his, his ear is there. And they're talking amongst themselves, sharing their egos, kind of debating about who is the most impressive among them. And when they get to Capernaum, they enter the house they're staying, and Jesus turns to them and says, so what were you talking about? And they don't want to admit it, because they know it's not a conversation worthy of Jesus or themselves, but Jesus overheard. And he starts this wonderful lesson about what it means to be a servant, what it means to put ourselves last and not elevate ourselves to first. And there's a few things I want to unpack about that. First of all, when we're talking about lowering ourselves and being a servant, I am not talking about, and Jesus was not talking about, and the Gospel of Mark was not talking about, people in abusive situations or um, uh, vulnerable situations where they have no choice but to be lonely, lowly. Um, slaves, uh, sex trafficking, uh, women in most of the world, um, uh, people with darker complexions in a good chunk of the world. It is not about accepting oppression. So let's get that off the table right now. It is not oppression. It's also not about, hmm, let me game the system. And if I want to be highest, I'll just do the drama of putting myself lowest. The oh, woe is me folks. I'm sure you've met them. The ones who, oh, life is so hard and they're always looking for sympathy. That's not the deal here. We're talking about people intentionally putting themselves in a position where they're not going to be lauded, they're not going to be honored, they're not going to be um, uh, the ones getting all the attention. They're not the ones who make the business choices to uh, best their competitors and come out on top. We're talking people who are willing to see the needs of others and not be worried that, you know, that's not my job, that's beneath me but that actually step up and say, you know what, I can help you right now. It, it's not about ego, it's about putting ego aside. And the thing is, every human being has this, this need to advance ourselves. It, it doesn't matter what culture we are or what that advancement looks like. It is a, a human imperative, a human, human basic instinct to do what we can so we will survive and be better off than those who will not have as many benefits as we are. So if it's a human instinct, if it's natural to us as breathing, then what Jesus is essentially asking us to do is make a choice. And see, this is, comes back to why someone who is already subservient and subjected and oppressed cannot make this choice. They don't have the experience of power to give it away. And that's what we're talking about here, is giving away our power, even just for a few minutes, to make ourselves the servant of someone else, to make ourselves lowly. And Jesus pulls in a child as the example of this. And uh, it was long thought that children were um, disregarded, they were thought to be nothing of substance until they could contribute to the economy. Now historians are discovering that's not quite the case, but with so much infant mortality in younger years, I mean, imagine a mother gives birth to 10 children, eight of them die. You're scared to invest in the next children because you're not sure if they're gonna survive. They lived in ancient times just as long as we live, but so many of them died before the age of, of two and then before the age of 10 and before the age of 18 that the, they skew the, the numbers down as far as lifespan. If you had managed to, to live beyond 19, if you'd managed to have a couple of children, if you'd managed to, to have a, a home and, and succeed, uh, that was already an expression of, of privilege, of, of good luck, of good health, of, of good circumstances. So you already had gamed, you had already won the numbers game as it were. So you can see why a child would be the representative, a representation of the vulnerable, of the don't invest, of the turn a blind eye, keep on walking. Because who knows how long that child was going to live? Who knows how much investment you were going to put into that child and whether they'd actually even grow to be responsible and take care of you in your old age? 
So it wasn't that children were not valued. It's that children were a very vulnerable space emotionally for most of the adults in society. But Jesus still brings this child on his lap and says, if you want to understand the kingdom of God, you have to be like this vulnerable one who risks death every day and still gets up and lives who risks poverty and still tries their best, who, who is probably hungry and still keeps going. That's what being a servant is, and making ourselves available to those who, who need our help, who need us to lie down our privilege, who need us to, oh, my hair is not working for me today, um, who need us to just give up our comfort and get out there and do the work of service. And Jesus tells them, uh, continues on to tell them, that when you do it for a child, you do it for me. And when you do it for me, you're doing it for God. And ultimately, in a religious world, your ultimate service is to God. Uh, it doesn't even matter if you were a, a pagan at the time or a um, Hebrew Christ follower. Get, being servants of God was the ultimate thing. And Jesus was not saying that the service that was being done in public by the powerful was legit, was the way it was supposed to be. He was saying that if you make yourselves vulnerable, if you make yourselves lowly, you got a better chance of understanding what service to God really, really means. And it has real life implications, not just uh, nice words about a choice that we get to make every day. A uh, number of years ago, I was uh, leading um, a group for a big event, and we were all asked to do organizational charts. And I made an organizational chart with me on the bottom. Now, my team really appreciated that. And I put the next level, so the, the next level of supervisors, under their staff. And we just moved up from there. The people who were making their own org charts and the person organizing this event were very, very resentful. They, they were very angry at me for doing this. What was I trying to prove? And they all had themselves at the top. And a, a common phrase I got was that I wasn't taking the credit for all the work I was doing. And I was thinking, this, this isn't where my credit lies. I and mean, I turned back to my team. And instead of the usual the person in charge tells us what to do attitude in my team. Yeah, it was different. It was like, this is the, this is my thoughts. I'll bring it to you. What do you think? This is my independent try of something. I'm going to go for it. And if it fails, it fails. We can look at it for what. But in the process of putting myself on the bottom rather than the top, I had empowered all of those people to lift up others to lift up their ideas and to lift up their vision of what we could be and weren't we the best team in the group and that's not just ego on my part my team did things that no other team in my position had ever accomplished before because we kept pushing the boundaries and we kept trying i was not there to stop them and push them down and keep them wedded to my vision because as soon as you put yourself on the bottom, it's not your vision anymore. It's the collective vision, what we can all create. And that's kind of the world Jesus is talking about. It's the collective vision of what we are to do. If we serve each other, we are closer to understanding what God's kingdom is supposed to be about love and about relishing each other, the relationships we have. And there are some times we are going to be put on privileged positions. And that's okay, as long as we don't internalize our sense that we deserve it more than someone else, that we need to be there more than anybody else. It is our time to really get in there and serve like Jesus served. He was willing to serve to the end, to death. Now, we're not asked to do that. But we can do better than we have been. And because it goes against our culture, it is countercultural, like most of Christianity, but it goes against our, our natural desire to be superior. It's a choice that we make, and it's one we've got the privilege of making again and again. There is something significant in understanding God by the simple act of putting others ahead of ourselves. And it seems so simple, but is so profound 
And the ripple effects really do give us a sense, a vision of what this world is that Jesus asked us to help create. Go do that. Go find a place where you will lower yourself. Now remember, this is not lowering yourself to the abuse of others. That's not even on the table. This is finding a situation where you are not elevating yourself needlessly or lording around because you're so superior, but looking for ways to lift up others. That is how the kingdom will be brought in.